let's discuss packages now. So this is another boring but important topic, uh, and I'm going to kick it off with a less boring slide. Uh, so in Python, not the language we're learning in this class, there are a set of uh, 20, I guess, Python koans that explain uh, philosophical details about how Python programs ought to be constructed. And two of the points that I think are particularly relevant to us right now is explicit is better than implicit. So by that I mean, well, here we had this problem with our auto grader uh, where we were implicitly using the wrong class file. Uh, and also, namespaces are one honking great idea. Let's do more of those. Okay. So let's see how we can use namespaces to make explicit which dependencies we're going to use. Okay. Um, so our motivation here is that we'd really like the ability to provide a canonical name for everything. For every class that we build, we want a way to refer to it so that we know we're getting what we want. Okay. So canonical uh, is a word that, uh, well, I guess the idea of a canonical representation is something that you should be thinking about throughout your long computer science career. It basically just means a unique representation for a thing. So let's talk about cars, for example. It is not a canonical representation of a car to talk about its license plate. You can move from one state to another, and now you get a new license plate. It changes. Or you can turn in your license plate, and maybe they'll reuse that number for someone else. Okay? By contrast, every vehicle, at least in the United States, has a so-called VIN number. It's a unique identifier that should never change. In theory. Okay? So it's as close to canonical as we can get with, uh, with a vehicle. Okay? So in Java, we want the same kind of thing. We want to be able to say that when we call, uh, I guess back to this example, when I call AG test array deck, I want some way of knowing I'm getting the AG test array deck I want, or the particular dog I want, or whatever. Right? So in Java, we're going to attempt to provide this canonicity by giving every class a package name. Okay? So what is a package? Well, it's going to sound like I'm just pushing terms further and further down the line, and I kind of am. Uh, so the Oracle documentation defines a package as a namespace that organizes classes and interfaces. Okay, so you may say, what? What does that mean? Well, we're getting there. Okay. Uh, by the way, I've started adding this little clip art. I found a, a free clip art, or it claims to be free. Uh, it's in the citations. So I don't know, maybe they stole it from somewhere and I'm double stealing it. But basically, this is saying, hey, there's something you can go do now. Right? I'm about to do something that all the starter code exists that you can try. So what we're going to do is that. Okay. So in my hug code folder, I'm going to copy from the uh, DIY folder. Oops. Oh, by the way, I kept the clicky keyboard because someone emailed me and said they actually like it. If you don't like it, though, let me know. I'll switch back to this this quiet guy, right? Okay. Uh, oh, I was looking for a USB cable. It's under there. Great. This is getting better and better. But it'll get better once we do this. Okay, so anyway, sorry. Uh, so we have here uh, a readme. Uh, which is all of the things uh, that we're supposed to do in this task. Task one is to convert dog and dog launcher, so they're part of some package, uh, and then make sure we can compile and run dog launcher. Okay? Um, so the idea here is that we want to avoid any like dog finger issues where we accidentally get the wrong dog. So we're going to take these two files and make them part of a package, okay? and then we'll learn how to, what that means as we go. So what I'm going to do, um, so in this case, this DIY exercise is something that you would not be able to do unless you had already seen me do it or you had read somewhere how to do it, right? This is not a use what we know already, um, but you may find it useful to later try and do it again and make sure you get it all, right? Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is this first thing I'm supposed to do is make it so the dog and dog launcher are part of this package. So the syntax in Java is you type package at the top of the file, uh, then ug, in this case, josh h dot animal. And this is the package name. It says that this is a dog that belongs to ug.joshh.animal. And we'll talk a little bit about why this particular string of characters. But for now, that's just the name of the package. Okay. Uh, then we're going to do the same with dog launcher. And then uh, we're going to do java dog.java, java c dog launcher. And everything seems uh, mostly fine. However, we see that when we tried to compile dog launcher, we got cannot find symbol, which is a little strange, right? Because if we do ls, there's dog.class. But here, it's saying I cannot find the dependency. Remember that what Java C does is you try and compile a file. It checks the class path. Okay, let's check our class path. Uh, it checks the class path, includes the current directory. And here, it's saying it can't find dog. But dog.class is there. What's going on? Well, the issue is that dog is no longer just dog. 
dog is now ug.joshh.animal. So in order for Java to be able to find this, uh, the, the convention, make, make this a little bigger, it's, you know, why not? Um, okay, so what we're going to do is make directory ug, and we're going to go into ug. We're going to make directory josh h, and then go into directory josh h. We're going to make directory called animal, go into animal. I guess that's why not to make it bigger. Okay. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we are going to move, so I'm going to copy dog.java and dog.class into this folder. Okay. Oops. All right. All right. So at this point, I've now moved the dog class into this folder. Why did I do that? Well, part of the syntax of Java packages is that if you belong to a package with the name ug.joshh.animal, you need to be in a folder named ug slash joshh slash animal. Okay. So now if I go back to this directory and I do dog launcher, it compiles just fine. Okay, Because now it says I need to find... Uh, if I want to look for dog, right, so I'm part of dog launcher. Uh, if I want to look for dog, I need to check and make sure that uh, someone's asking for a dog. So now I am going to check the uh, my package directory. I'm in ug.joshh.animal. So I'm going to look at ug.joshh.animal, uh, and the, the compiler will find it there and be happy. Okay. Let's try running dog launcher. Cannot find or load main class dog launcher. What's going on here? Well, it's the same issue, actually. Dog launcher is supposed to be part of this package. It is not currently there in that appropriate folder, and so Java is not able to find it. So we actually also need to move dog launcher to ug animal, or sorry, ug josh h animal. Uh, let's see, oop, dog launcher, sorry. Okay. Now that we've moved them, so let's make sure they're there. Now that we've moved them into that folder, I can do java dog launcher. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yes, but see, now still, sorry, now still Java dog launcher, it still doesn't work, okay? So another syntactical point that we need to, I need to inform you about is that in order to run something, a class that is part of a package, I would need to do java ug.joshh.animal.dogLauncher, and now everything will work fine, okay? So what have we really earned for ourselves at this point? It seems like all we've done is caused ourselves grief, right? Now everything's awkward and everything has to be in these weird folders. I have to run things using this horrible syntax. Uh, well, you know, it's a trade-off, right? In this way, we get canonicity. We're giving a specific name for everything, but the downside is now we have extra, we have to do more extra specification, okay? Now, as it happens, you will often not be running main methods that are part of packages. Usually packages are libraries and you build your own code. So in order to simulate that process, let's make now task two. Let's create an external dog launcher class. Okay, and what I mean by that is not part of the package. It's just like you know you used uh, you've used JUnit, right? You didn't do like Java org.junit.assert. Blah blah blah. You wrote your own program that used those classes. Okay, so let's do external dog launcher. Okay. External dog launcher. Uh, and what does it do? It creates a dog, d equal to new dog, uh, let's name him uh, um, Boils, uh, he will be a shrimp dog, and he will weigh 9 pounds, or 9 units, whatever they are. Okay. So this is external dog launcher. And if we try and compile it, we'll get this annoying issue. Again, we can't find dog. We've actually already had this issue before when we did JUnit. With JUnit, if we wanted to use one of the JUnit classes, we had to do something like this. Okay, so in this case, there is no such thing as a dog. However, there is an ug.joshh.animal.dog. Uh, and I can instantiate of using the same syntax. And in this case, they're saying, I don't want just any old dog. I want the kind that's defined in this package. And now, everything should work just fine, except I didn't print out the dog. So we run it, and Boils is a shrimp dog weighing nine pounds. Great. Okay. Last thing for this little piece of lecture, right? So in this case, we've created an external dog launcher class. We can use the dog, but this is ugly and annoying syntax. So now finally we come to the state of the art, okay? We can use an import statement, which is going to, for the purposes of this program, mean we don't have to type out a bunch of stuff, right? So I can do import ug.joshh.animal.dog. And now what this means is any time the symbol dog appears, we actually really mean this one. Okay. 
So we'll do that. And that. And now at this point, uh, we're basically back to where we were with JUnit, and the code is um, basically beautiful, right? Like the only new messy thing, uh, as far as the user of a package is concerned, is they have to import at the top if they want to avoid putting all of this stuff. Okay. Uh, now this is actually really cool because we're still getting canonicity, right? We are still referring to a specific dog. So if, for example, I tried to hmm, what the if I were to create dog.java in the current directory, we'll call it, this is like a, a competing dog, competing weird gross dog. Okay. Uh, so in this case, if I have public class dog, um, and we did public, oops, public dog, like um, uh, favorite cat, that is just a very strange dog. Um, and then, uh, private string f cat back with my f cat equals favorite cat um, and then we that's the only thing that defines the dog what cat it likes the horrors um, Nelly that's a good name for a cat um, so this dog dot class it is not part of the dog package so you might ask yourself when you call external dog launcher right when I do external dog launcher which dog will it use will it use the dog in the current directory? Or will it use this import version? Well, it's going to use the imported version because what it's saying here is that uh, I want to be using this particular dog, not like this uh, unpackaged dog. All right. So we get canonicity. We avoid creating any kind of horrible, abhorrent, cat-loving dog, uh, and instead we get the one that we have imported. So we still get canonicity. Okay. But the most important thing—I mean, that last little bit about like, what if we have competing dogs? I'm going to delete it because I don't know, it's kind of an aside that I improvised. But the most important thing here is that at this point, we have a package we can send other people, they can import it, and we don't have to worry that they're going to have some other dog class that they themselves have defined, or that, uh, you know, suppose they do have another library that uses dog, like uh, maybe there's one built into JUnit, then, well, they'll use whichever one they import. Okay, so that's the punchline as far as packages go, and the most important stuff uh, that we need to know. So let's step back and debrief a little bit of what we just did. Uh, so essentially what we did is we wanted to address the fact that some classes might maybe share names. We might have multiple dogs. So what we did is we said, okay, well, a package is a namespace that organizes classes as interfaces. Uh, what it does for us is it gives them an extra little oomph, right? It says you're not just dog. You're part of the ugh.joshh.animal empire, right? You're, uh, you've been canonicalized in that way. It's a namespace, a space in which you live, okay? Um, so what we did in dog.java is, well, we just added a line to the top that said package ug.joshh.animal. Uh, and then we saw that if we use it from the outside, we had to use the entire canonical name at first, right? We had to say ug.joshh.animal.dog, so forth. Um, and we had this before when we first learned about JUnit, right? The very first time we used JUnit, we typed in org.junit.assert.assert equals, okay? Um, and so... Uh, the thing that I promised I would tell you earlier uh, was that why this particular thing, why ug.jhh.animal? Uh, well, it's because that the general convention that Oracle suggests is that a package name should start with the website address, but backwards. So it might be like org.junit, right? That's the website for junit.org. So just so, my website is joshh.ug, so it should be ug.joshh.animal. Um, now, it's not always so bad as having to type out all of this stuff, right? We saw, if you were paying super close attention, that if we're using uh, code from another class in the same package, right? So suppose I'm working on ug.joshh.animal.doglauncher, then I could just use the simple name. In fact, actually, let's look at it real quick. So if we look at dog launcher, right? There's no ug.joshh.animal stuff here uh, because this is also part of the same package, right? So it's one way we can avoid having to type all of this stuff is if you're part of the same package, you can just use the simple name, like dog, as opposed to the entire canonical name. Now we also, in the little exercise we just did, saw alternate approaches, right? So typing out the entire name can be annoying. Uh, so we can use an import statement. And what that does is it says, there's a particular class I'd like to use. It's called ug.joshh.animal.dog. And once I've done that, uh, I do dog d equals new dog, and that's fine. So this is different than how imports in other languages like Python work, right? In Java, if something's in the class path, you can use it. You don't have to explicitly import it in the code. Um, 
In Java, by contrast, the purpose in an import is just to make code concise. It does not unlock new libraries. Okay, so it's a subtle distinction, but it basically just says, I don't want to type all this stuff. That's why you should read import. Okay. Now I'll throw out there that it is also possible to say I want everything from a particular package, right? So for example, I can say import every animal from the dog, uh, from the dog.joshh library. So I'll get dogs and cats and walruses and whatever else. Uh, but I'm going to say it's a bad idea. And you actually already know why it's a bad idea. You think very carefully. Okay, so why might this be a problem? Well, it's because if any other package out there that also does a wildcard input, uh, import exists, then we're going to have multiple copies of dogs. Though in this case, the compiler will yell at you and I'll say, you can't import multiple dogs. You can't have one from ug.joshh.animal, one from org.junit, and so forth. So wildcard uh, imports are dangerous because they can cause compilation errors. But they also make it annoying because it pollutes your namespace. One of the great things about being explicit, about saying import ug.joshh.animal.dog, is that the reader of your code knows where dog came from. But if I had a bunch of wildcard statements, a bunch of wildcard imports, like six or seven of them, I wouldn't really know where dog comes from. So this type of explicit import is generally preferred. Uh, and I would say that you pretty much never want to use a wildcard import, even if that means you have like 50 imports at the top of your file. That's fine. Um, now it's also possible to import not just entire classes like we've been doing here. So before we said import this class, you can also import, uh, we'll see in a moment, uh, public static members. Okay. So one way we could make using assert, for example, less annoying. We could import the assert class and then at all points say, hey, assert class, give me your public static method assert equals. But we've actually seen a different thing. Uh, if you look very closely at the code we wrote before for JUnit, we use something called import static. And so what import static does is it says, I don't want this whole class, right? I actually just want this method of the class so that I can call it without actually specifying a class name. And again, it just makes your code a little more concise. Um, and in fact, you know, we've done this already, but the way we did it before is we said import static org JUnit assert dot star. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to say that I don't think there's any other case in this class where you should use a wildcard import. This is the one, import static or JUnit assert dot star. Uh, and the basic argument here is just that it's pretty unlikely because JUnit has such specific names, assert equals, assert array equals, things like that. It's really unlikely that any other library is going to have static members with the same uh, name as this right here. Ooh, my rendering is slightly off. Move arrow. I don't know if we should blame Google or me. Uh, but basically, yeah. This is the only time you want to import static members. Okay. So I warned you that this part of the lecture is uh, important, but a little boring. But I hope that you found it edifying. Right? Since we've seen this stuff before, we've kind of pulled the, the wool away from our eyes, pulled the curtain aside, and we can now stare directly into the sun. It's good. Okay. So I'll just throw out a couple of gotchas, because these may bite you on lab five or on project two, or just moving forward with the class. Okay. So two things. If you're just like, what is happening with packages? And you're doing things from the interpreter. From IntelliJ, it should be fine. But from the interpreter, uh, whenever you use the, uh, whenever you try and run a class, right, uh, you need to make sure that the class files that uh, exist are in the appropriate folder. So I already did this before, but just a reminder, if something's part of the ug.joshh.animal package, it should be in the ug slash joshh slash animal folder. Uh, and just an aside, if you want to go out there and learn to be a little more advanced, there's a special dash D flag that will generate the appropriate folders if you have uh, Java files that are um, if part of packages. Okay. Um, and then lastly, the other gotcha is that when you try and run a main method, whenever you try and uh, specify what class you want, if you're calling a main method that is part of a package class, you have to give the entire canonical name. So if I want to call the animal dog launcher, I have to say java ug.joshh.animal.doglauncher. Uh, and this isn't really a big deal because for the most part, we won't be running main methods from inside packages. However, you will be in project two, and that's why you're going to be typing Java space editor dot editor, and you'll see what I mean when you get to lab five. Okay, that's it for packages.